everybody. Welcome to a quickie with Miss B. Today is Friday. It's fabulous Friday. Woohoo! You know what that means? We have to have a good story and on a good note because it's Friday. And you I know, th I don't think it's yeah. fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeedy. So today we're going to talk about those random emergency calls. Now, I have one, John, that has stuck with me for probably 25 years. Oh, my word. <laughs> and this is from a long time ago. <laughs> this, is back, this is back when dot matrix was a big thing, people. <laughs> for all of you that just knew what I, all of you that know what I just said, you're old. <laughs> Actually, now that I think of it, there's actually two stories. But let me tell the first one because this one has to do more with the actual emergency phone call. So, <clears throat> picture it. I'm, I'm living in Minneapolis at the time, so I'm on my way home from work. And I'm listening to the radio station. Now, back in that day, you know that you really couldn't be swearing at all on the radio. And they would bleep you out if you swore. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I'm going to insert a lot of bleeps in here. <laughs> Just warning you. Yeah. So anyways, this caller um, ends up hitting a deer and he thinks, oh, okay. I'm going to throw it in my back seat and I'm going to take it home with me. Free food. <laughs> Works for me. Okay, so at some point in time, the deer is not dead. <laughs> oh, man. The deer uh, comes to. <laughs> okay, the oh, deer comes to. The deer is freaking out. He's It's panicking, and all of a sudden, it turns around and bites this guy in the neck. <laughs> Wait a minute. The deer bit him? Bit him. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a, an amazing one one, one call. <laughs> You're setting the stage for absolute pandemonium here. Oh, oh yeah. So, now he's driving down the road. He The deer comes to The deer's in a panic, and he's flailing around, and you can just imagine hooves going every which way, and all of a sudden, he bites the guy in the back of the neck. The guy immediately pulls over to the nearest phone to make a 911 call. <laughs> And I'm this. bleeding profusely <laughs> from a deer bite. <laughs> and this is how, as I can recall it, it's probably not word for word, how the 911 call went. 911, <clears throat> what's your emergency? Yeah, I got a deer that just bit me in the back of the bleeping, bleeping neck. I'm bleeping, bleeping, bleeding. I need bleeping help right bleeping now. <laughs> <laughs> now, back in the day, for those boys and girls that are probably too young to know this, we didn't have cell phones, nor did we really have GPS. <laughs> so you had to actually ask the person where they were calling from, and if they could, give some directions. <laughs> she says, okay, call us, sir. I need you to calm down and tell me, where are you? I'm in the bleeping <laughs> uh, phone booth. I'm bleeping talking to you. I need the ambulance here right now. I'm bleeping in my back of my neck and the bleeping <laughs> deer is in my bleeping car. <laughs> I'm going to bleep and die. <laughs> Quick question, sir. How'd the deer get in the car? <laughs> Before I bleep and send you some bleeping help <laughs> to stop the bleeping bleeding on the back of your bleeping neck, how about you bleep and tell me how the bleeping deer got in the bleeping car in the bleeping first place? 
So she's like, can you tell me where you are? I told you, I'm in the phone booth. <laughs> oh, that's easy. <laughs> that phone booth. Yeah, the only yeah. one in America. Gotcha. We're on our way. <laughs> and then, of course, she's trying to you know, get more information. And as she's trying to get more information, he's getting really mad. And then he's like, I'm mother bleeping, bleeding. <laughs> get me a bleeping ambulance. I'm bleeping dying here. <laughs> I don't think anyone's actually died from a deer bite. <laughs> Unless the deer bit him in the jugular. If it did, well, this, this is just going to get richer by the moment. <laughs> Please do continue. <laughs> so now picture this as I'm listening to this in the car and I'll hear this conversation going on between him and the 911 operator. We're practically in standstill traffic. And of course, you know, you're bored at that point in time. So you're looking around to see what's going on. So the person in, in the car next to me is just looking at me like, what the heck is going on with her? She's spazzing out with nothing but pure laughter. Which is something many of us do about the, <laughs> on a weekly basis. So we all, all of us that listen to this show and are a part of this show, actually know what that woman's thinking because we also have thought it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so the moral to the story, boys and girls, is don't put a bleeping, bleeping deer in the back of your bleeping car. <laughs> Unless you bleep and make sure it's bleeping dead first. <laughs> And on that note, let's take a bleeping break. There you go. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to hey! <laughs> a clicky with Ms. B. I'm Ms. B. <laughs> wow, uh, we had a blooper. All, and you used all those words in a sentence. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I have one more story for you. That I'll leave you with. Hopefully it'll be funny and rememberable. Memorable? Not rememberable? No, memorable. Well, well, that was funny. That was funny right there. (laughs) A little tongue tied. You got to love a live blooper. It'll be rememberable. I'm just practicing on how I'm going to tell the story. Oh, okay. Okay, so, anyways, here's my last story for today on fabulous friday so this was a number of years ago we were at uh one of the parades for the world series when the minnesota twins won it was quite a while ago so Nin- my father 1944 <laughs> not that long ago uh my father-in-law at the time was feeling rather ill so we decided that we should uh, take him to the emergency room because he didn't seem to be doing very well So this was back in the day when you didn't have actual rooms. There was just like partitions with curtains in between, you know, the the rooms or, you know, for um, where it was uh, located in the emergency room. So uh, we're waiting around for the doctor. And of course, you know, they're, they were over at the next room helping out this guy. This guy apparently had fallen down and cut his head pretty bad to the point where he needed stitches. He didn't have that button. <laughs> no, he didn't have that button. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they got to give him stitches. And so they took care of him. The doctor comes back in and says to him, okay, Mr. So-and-so, uh, you're ready to go home, but we can't discharge you until you have a ride. Somebody needs to come pick you up. He's like, no, no, I'm fine. And he's trying to convince the doctor that he's fine. He says, no, sir, you're not fine. Yes, I'm fine. He says, no, sir, I think you're intoxicated and you really need to have somebody come and get you. So there is this pause. (laughs) And you can just about hear the gears turning in this guy's head. He says, I talk like this all the time, you know, trying to defend himself. But at the meantime, you can, you can, you know that he's trying to think of something to say. So the doctor is trying to drive this point home that, no, you're intoxicated. I can't release you until somebody comes and, you know, picks you up. I can't just let you, you know, go off by yourself. He says, 
No, no, that's perfectly fine. I, I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. He says, I'm not worried about that, but you truly are intoxicated. And I know this for a fact. And the guy goes, well, how do you know that? And so the doctor says, because you're slurring your speech. <laughs> and the guy turns around and says to him in his drunken voice, I, I'm not intoxicated. I, I talk like this all, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor says, no, you're slurring your speech. I talk this way all the time. And he's like, no, really, you're intoxicated. And this kind of went back and forth for a couple of minutes. And then finally he said, sir, really, you're intoxicated. I know this for a fact. You're slurring your speech. You're not speaking correctly. You're slurring your speech. This is the way I always talk. And so this time he added, because I had a lobotomy done in 1971. <laughs> <laughs> now you can picture that the doctor, the nurse that were in the other room come rushing out and they're just in the hallway there laughing. Now we're in the next room hearing this whole thing going down. And do you know how hard <laughs> it is to try to be quiet when you want to laugh your butt especially, off? <laughs> especially for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't open the curtain, get some popcorn, and go, Shh, no, it's fine. Just carry on. We're just, we're just okay. This is better than a movie. And I was trying so hard not to laugh. And the harder that I was trying not to laugh, the more that I just needed to laugh. So I'm out there in the hallway with the doctor and the nurse laughing right next to them. They're trying to gain their composure to go back into the room <laughs> to finish with this patient. <laughs> Okay, Mr. <laughs> Frontal Lobotomy. <laughs> uh, I have to say that was the best drunk excuse I've ever heard in an emergency room. <laughs> Just saying. And on that note, speaking of alcohol, let's go get some. Yes. <laughs> 